Творца Твоего и Духа Твоего, Света Гоня, от меня от меня. Воздашь мне рада спасения Твоего и Духом Владычину в Гордеме. Научу беззаконные пути Он Твоим и силы к Тебе обратятся. И с Вами от шарей, Боже, Боже, спасение моего. Возрадуется и мой правде Твоей. Господи, во сне моей отверши у самого застя хвалу Твою. Я краще бы вас хотел идти жертву дал бы Бога, все сожжения благоволивши. Жертву Богу Дух сокрушен, сердце сокрушенное, смиренно Бог не мучежит. У Божий Господи благоволением Твоим Сионом и досадившись со стену Иерусалимские. Тогда благоволивши жертву правду в отношении все сожигаемые. Тогда возложат вам так вот и псы. Апостола и Евангелиста Луки, да даст тебе благо благовествующим и силы многого исполнения Евангелия возлюбленного Сына Своего, Господа нашего Иисуса Христа. Аминь. И мудрость просит, слышим святого Евангелия и святую. Слышит, вопрошав уже его ученицы, его глаголище, 
что есть притча сия, он же рече, вам есть дано ведать и тайны Царствия Божия, впрочем же, в притчах доведящие не видят и слышащие не разумеют, и же сия притча семя есть Слово Божие, и я еже при пути суд слышащий, потому же приходит дьявол и землет Слово от сердец их, да не веровавши спасутся, и я же не камень, и же их да услышат с радостью приемлет Слово, и все корени не ему, и же во время веруют, и во время напасти отпадают, и же терни падшиеся от слуз слышащие, и от печали, и богатства, и с восьми житейскими ходящие подавляют и не совершают плода, и же на доброй земле сие суть, и же добрым сердцем и благим слышаши слово держат, и плод творят в терпении, сия глагола возгласи Today's gospel, dear brothers and sisters, speaks to us about the parables. It uh, speaks about the sower sowing seeds. We understand these uh, quite well by now. We have never heard them before. We can go into detail a little later. But Christ himself explains what this means. Uh, each of the steps of the uh, seed falling in different environments, not growing or growing, depends on where it falls in our hearts. We understand that. And then he says it multiple times, that those who have ears, let them hear. And he says that, and to us, that also is something that we kind of heard before, that from the gospel, we uh, gain that uh, wisdom, we understand that he has come to teach us and we need to open our ears and maybe we need to open our hearts too, as he says in his gospel, to understand it. But there is something else that he says right following his proclamation. <coughs> the one who has ears, let him hear. He says something that may slip our attention. It's very subtle, but very powerful. He then sees, says, and it's translated from Greek and English in, I wouldn't say wrong way, but they use the word, heed what you what you hear. 
he, but in Greek, and we've talked about Theodore too about the meaning of the word, the word is used for see what you hear. He says see what you hear. He doesn't say heed. And that is um, almost uh, counterintuitive. What do you mean I'm supposed to see what I hear? Well, I think today, as he's always done, he's shown us what that means. I think today the gospel really came true for everyone who's come here because we really do see what we hear. It's not just th theory, it's not just uh, theology, it's, it's not just understanding that comes through the gospel that he gives it to, uh, to our hearts and gives to our minds, but he's come to show us in this miracle of this church that's come and grown as a seed was planted many years ago has come to the fruitful ground apparently and bore that fruit that we can see what he's talking about. He came to this earth to show us, not just, just tell us stories or give us theories. He came and he wrote a story of our salvation with his own blood and he gave his own life in that story that is the true story that gives us opportunity to be saved for eternity. And that is his gift, and that, again, is something that we can add in the words of the gospel, in the words of Christ, and try to embody that in our lives so that we can show what we hear, and so that others can see what he's teaching us, just the way others could see what he taught them as himself, as his example, and as his eternal blessing upon all humanity in his salvation. Amen.
и всех певчих и прихожан святого храма сего да поменят Господь Бог во Царстве Своем всегда, ныне и присно, и во веки веку. All of our so pious and orthodox Christians, may the Lord our God remember us all in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the age of the age of the Братья и сестры, поздравляю вас с праздником в этом новом, новом храме. И, как мы говорили сегодня словами Евангелия, мы говорили о, о том, как Господь говорит, смотрите, что слышите. Он также говорит в этом Евангелии, когда ученики спрашивают его, «Раби, учитель, где живешь?» Он говорит, «Придите и видите». И сегодня вы пришли, чтобы увидеть вновь. А, чудо, чудо Божьей благодати и явление Его милости и силы, которую Он дает своим православным людям, народу Божию, сказанному священству, как говорит апостол Павел, людей, взятых в людел. Это храм Господь строил для вас и вашими же руками. Мы благодарим вас всех за помощь. Мы благодарим вас за молитвы, мы благодарим вас за поддержку и мы благодарим Бога и всех святых. Uh, today, as we heard in the gospel, uh, as we talked about seeing what you hear, we also hear in the gospel when students come to to uh, Christ and they say, Rabbi, teacher, where do you live? And he says, come and see. And so today you've come to see the miracle of his, of his mercy, of his holy uh, blessing to have a church. That church is built for, uh, for us by God with our hands, with the hands of those who have worked very hard to make it happen, with all of you who have come forward to make this happen, we really thank you. Uh, today we also have our beautiful uh, saints, saints of the Western Church. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'll mention this again. This is important. Not every time do we have visitation. Today we have 47 Roman popes before the schism, venerated in the Orthodox Church. They've come to this church today, beautifully aligned in the heavens that way. What can we say? We're humbled, we're blessed, uh, we're visited by 47 uh, uh, holy bishops of Rome. Why are they here? We can ask ourselves, I have some idea that Western Church has become Eastern Church and the un union of the churches has occurred a long time ago. It's that, that the schism that happened is something that can only be mended through orthodoxy, not any other way around. That's why they're here in this tiny little orthodox church in the middle of nowhere on the edge of the ocean, on the edge of this world. We're here and uh, the holy popes of Rome are here to tell, tell, tell us that Christ sees what we've done and that he values our church no less than he val vows, values the, uh, uh, the throne of Peter in Rome. Because truly, every place where His Holy Communion is given is the place that it, He is present. And He cannot be present anywhere less or more. Поэтому сегодня Христос присутствует в нашем храме, как Он присутствует в Риме, как Он присутствует в любом месте, где да, Его святое причастие раздается верующим, где Он приносит Себя в жертву. Он не, при, он не присутствует меньше или больше. Сегодня Он явил Свою любовь нам, дал нам возможность служить новой церкви и явил Свои, а, а, так сказать, послов Небесного Царствия, западных святых, западных святителей, римских пап, которые были прославлены церковью. И как я сказал по-английски, я скажу по-русски, что это объединение церквей, оно никогда не прерывалось, конечно, оно тысячу лет назад прервалось за счет того, что католичество отступило от православия. Но сегодняшнее единение подчеркивает, что настоящее единение может быть только в православной церкви и в православном мире. Все остальное – это от, 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 отступление от истинной веры. И сегодня 47 частиц, вы видите здесь, святых предстоятелей западной церкви, которые пришли поклониться не нам с вами, а Богу, и благословить нас с вами. На долгое плавание, я надеюсь. We also have 
um, when we started put up icons uh, in this church, and you can see not much is still done. There's a lot to be done. The iconostasis is to be decorated, embellished, finished. We have a lot to, to still do, and we've done a lot. But as we put up the icon of St. Nicholas, the uh, water worker, and next to him we put up the icon of the Tsar Nicholas, I, for the first time, noticed that our iconostasis repeats the same shape of the, of the icon of St. Nicholas, the Tsar, uh, the, the martyr Tsar of our, of our nation and of uh, the Holy Anointed One. So I think that shows us that that gateway is the gateway of heaven as um, our, um, our Tsar and our saint is um, pointing out to us. And we are blessed today also by uh, the Roman family that has come to bless us today as um, they were their presence as um, we are shown that the grace of God as uh, works in mysterious ways everybody is alive before God we have uh, the popes of Rome we have uh, the descendants of Romanovs we have uh, each of you who has received the body of Christ who are all uh, royal and blessed in this beautiful day and I thank God for this blessing and for all your help. We thank Mother Andrea as well for coming. And Mother Andrea was last time here seen uh, at the Great Land. And the last words that she said, and I remember, I don't know if she remembers. Do you remember what she said? Yes. Mother Andrea, can you repeat it? <laughs> I said, St. Nicholas doesn't want to be in this little place. You have to help him. She said, St. Nicholas needs a new church. Uh -huh. And now she comes back totally on time in a pur purposeful way, just coming back by the, the way that uh, God leads us and blessing this church. Uh, and you're here with the relics and you're here with uh, your prayers. We appreciate you and beautiful books and little uh, things you can get. Uh, the, everything comes full circle. And I call for the main Yes, please. I have to add to what I said. You just stand on that one. So they can see you better. <laughs> and to add to what I said when I was here, the last time I was here, St. Nicholas, this is beautiful. What you all you all have done this. I saw you all take the icons out, bring the icons back. Yesterday there were 14 men and, and women here working to get everything cleaned up and ready for the day. And this is wonderful. This is this is your work. However, don't rest on your laurels. When I looked into seeing, you know, people can't get to the liturgy. They, they're they old, they can't drive. Maybe they can park it. Maybe we can have a church bus. Like, you know, some church bus. Church bus. So I looked up online to see if there's any Orthodox church buses. And I saw the Russians took it a step further. They have a bus church. It's a church and a bus that goes to little towns. And then not resting on their laurels, they go, we can do better than that. And they made a boat church. And that goes to even more remote areas. So what I'm saying is not, not make a bus church or a boat church, although that would be great. But you need to start thinking about what comes next after this. This is not your final resting place. This is not your St. Nicholas's final home for this community. And you need to start thinking about that now. Don't rest on your laurels and say it's good enough for God. Move forward and keep going and back Father Theodore and Father Vladimir, because they are you're blessed with good priests. I, some of the best spiritual guidance I've had has come from these two holy priests. And so let's see it grow from there. Thank you, Mother. Thank you so much. Thank you for your inspiring words. Um, well, you come back in a half a year. We don't know what might happen. <laughs> you know, that, that's been the way it's been. Father, will you say any words? The birthdays? Yes. We, did, um, we had certain people that had a special days. Um, Matthew had his one year uh, birthday. Uh, he was baptized in our church just recently, and he turned one. We. We had uh, Nathan, our altar servant, uh, who had just had his birthday uh, yesterday. We have, uh, um, who else do we have? Not a lot. I forget. David, David. David had his, uh, one, year. his one year baptism just a couple of days ago. And that's, uh, you know, we have probably more people we forgot, but forgive us. We want to sing you many, many blessed years. 
So what uh, if you get from the draw so You can come forward in your in your coordination camera. <laughs> You want to sing in the many years? And also, we also have <clears throat> not to be. Uh, we have to remember that today is also this past recently has been Father's ten-year anniversary of his ordination, and that is a great blessing for <clears throat> his parish and personally for me. So we thank God for. Father uh, Vladimir, and we thank God for all those who have celebrated. God read them, and we read out the names of their servants and men, servants and generations, and preserved them for many years. I have something that, uh, to just to express to you that today I feel like a newly ordained priest. After many decades of being a priest, today is like a newly ordained. And thanks be to God. And thanks be to all of you, and to Father Vladimir, and all those who have worked so hard, physically and spiritually and materially, have, have uh, brought us to this present day, this present place. In the few years that I've been here, I've seen the growth, <coughs> the, the actual doubling of growth spiritually. People have come, and they've grown a new spirit, a strong spirit of orthodoxy here, and as a result, we've needed to not only double, we double it ourselves spiritually, but now doubling ourselves in this physical uh, church. So thanks be to God for that. And I, <clears throat> again, thank you all, thank God, and thank you all for all the work, all the support. Without that, we would not have it. We thank St. Nicholas, and of course the Mother of God, for strengthening us through these times. This didn't go without temptations. There have been temptations. That's, that's, that's a good thing to have in certain times. You know you're doing the right thing. I remember way back in 1980, well, not way back, but 1980, we were establishing a church, and some of the people came to help. Some people had uskushenia, temptations on the way. Some people had a flat tire. They couldn't get there. Some, one of the carpenters came and was bang, nailing something into the, into the, uh, for the, for the building of, some, of the Iconostasio, and the hammer flew out of his hand. And he said, I'm in the right place, because the evil one does not want us to do this, and we're doing this for, this, for the glory of God. So glory be to God for all things. Many blessings. Thank you, Father. Father has been helping as everyone. I will not mention everyone right now because so many of you have done so much, but a special thing goes out to Seraphim who's been uh, really um, uh, monitoring and talking about uh, the Eskushenia, our tile guy, who's done a beautiful job with this marble floor. Their car broke. They, they had a wheel fly out at, to the, from a truck onto their on a highway, but they all lived and their car was broken down. They had to delay. That's why we had, we didn't finish a week before, but everybody was safe. So yes, things like that do happen. Um, I'm also very grateful to Alexander and and people who are, Xenia, who are working on the carpentry now and uh, people who are continuing to work all the time and doing everything they're doing or just uh, helping us financially because this is expensive. Uh, people ask me what I want for my 10 year anniversary. Uh, because as a priest, I was ordained literally uh, three days ago. It was a Sunday that year. Bishop Nicholas, who was at the time still not a bishop, um, uh, but in Irmont, came with Cursed Mother of God. And I was blessed to be a deacon um, the night before. Uh, and then they let me have the Kurs Kaiken in my uh, cell overnight. Uh, I didn't know where I was in heaven or on earth after I was a deacon. The next day, God promoted me to be a, a priest, and that was exactly 10 years ago. And so I say uh, to you, as uh, if you want to give me a gift, which people did ask, I will ask for the seven candle holder that we would put on this, um, in this altar. It wouldn't be my, uh, it would be God's, but I would really appreciate if we could pull together and help to get that. 
um, because we need one. And uh, anything you can do for this church is the greatest gift to me, but most importantly, it is you. It is you. It's prayer, and it's you. It's St. Lawrence, uh, saint of uh, Mother, Mother Andrea, actually gave me his relic as a gift, that I really love this saint. She didn't know, but I, I know, because I, when I was in Florence, I really um, appreciated this saint. There's a lot of St. Lawrence cathedrals in there. And he was, uh, when he was tortured, because uh, the emperor wanted to know where uh, were the treasures, the treasures of uh, the Christian church, where they kept. And he said, you know, the treasures of Roman Christian church are people of the church. So it's all of you. You are the gift, you are the treasures. The real treasures are people, not money, but we do need them to uh, make beautiful places for us together, and that does it, it comes, that's pretty self-explanatory. So thank God for that. Um, I might be forgetting something, but I also want you to pray for me because I'm leaving to go on a pilgrimage that was planned way before this church even came about because all of this happened in one month. This took one month to build and one month to prepare, which is a miracle. And uh, before that, long before that, I had a blessing with Bishop Nicholas to, uh, uh, to do a pilgrimage to Italy. So I'm leaving this week, but I'm leaving in good hands of Father Theodore and all our servants and all our deacons. And uh, we thank God that we all, I, I feel safe leaving this uh, place to, to you to continue finishing it up. And I will pray for you at the relics of St. Nicholas in body and in Rome and wherever uh, we are going in our program. I can't, uh, I, I wouldn't have planned this this way, but I will be God willing back uh, coming to uh, this church in a month. Uh, we hopefully we'll see Bishop Nicholas in Florence. They're having all European uh, conference of clergy there for the first time in history of the world. Uh, that church has become Rokor Church four years ago with the blessing of Metropolitan Hilarion was received into Rokor from Constantinople and that church is historic and a beautiful place where West and East again come together in the right way and I'm going to be praying for you there as well, Divine Liturgy, um, hopefully two times with Bishop Irenaeus also present there. So I'm going to be on the mission, but I will definitely remember you in my prayers and in my heart. God bless you all. Я не буду переводить, простите, чтобы уже все, по-моему, понятно. I won't translate on this. No. So people took it to heart that you need the people's help to beautify the church, so somebody has done something for you. Oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> St. Patrick, thank you. Pretty fit day. I appreciate it. I appreciate that so much. We have a relic of St. Patrick in our in our church next to Mother Andrea, so we will definitely have this item with with the with the relic of St. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland and West in many ways. Uh, we'll put it here. We have a particle of the cross. You can put it down. Thank you so much. I'm honored and touched. And I do love Western saints as St. John uh, of Shanghai always would put uh, our attention to venerate the Western saints. I, said it again, I say it again. They got the uh, really miss, missed because their own people turned away from them when they started to go Catholic. They started to forget first thousand years. It was no more relevant. They needed new Catholic saints. So they stopped looking at their old saints as much. St. Patrick maybe is one of the few, but look how he's celebrated with beer, right? So it's not exactly Orthodox spirit. Uh, and then in the West, in the East, they forgot the Western saints because of the tension and the political situation, which is happening kind of in a way again. So it wasn't really appropriate to remember Western Catholics, you know, separating. So Western saints get forget forgotten. And we don't want that to happen. Being here in the West or wherever we are, with the blessing of St. John of Shanghai, who really venerated them, uh, and wanted us to remember that legacy of a thousand years. Maybe we're blessed by uh, these relics, by God in this new church, and continue to grow and prosper in spirit. Amen.